Hey everybody, welcome back to our journey through the Bible. As we discussed last Thursday, we're now making our way through the book of Isaiah. And sure enough, late last week, we, we came across chapter 6. And Isaiah's vision that he outlines as his initial call to serve as a prophet of God. Now, Isaiah places that vision in the year that King Uzziah died, which was 739 B.C. That's how we know that first Isaiah, the first half plus of the book as a whole, was generally written in the second half of the 8th century B.C. It's because of this dating that we have in chapter 6. Anyway, this is the vision as Isaiah describes it in Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, I, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Now, those of you listening who have a more extensive understanding or experience with my time in ministry likely knew that I, I wouldn't be able to pass by this passage without focusing on it in one of our devotionals. In fact, the moment I read those words, my mind, my eyes tracked right down to this, this bookmark that, that sits on my desk. It has the words of Isaiah 6, 8 inscribed on it. Whom shall I send? Here, I, here am I, send me. This bookmark was a gift from a very dear friend at the completion of my time in ministry with the First Congregational Church of Clarkston, Michigan. The reason she gave me that bookmark with that particular inscription, however, is because she knew full well what a central theme that passage was to my time in ministry as a whole. And it sits right at the edge of my desk all the time and has for the decade since it was first given to me. Many of you, I would guess, hear these words from Isaiah 6 and, and immediately start hearing the tune of the hymn, Here I Am, Lord. That hymn was actually published in the early 1980s, but it was really more in the 90s that it became more and more popular in many of our churches. And by the time I was in seminary and pursuing ministry in the mid to late 90s, that hymn had become a beloved addition to the hymnody of many of the, our, of the mainline Protestant churches in the U.S. It's an uplifting tune that brings to life these words in a way that can stir a congregation as it's sung, and it was a big part of those formative years as I entered into ministry. So given how much that scripture and hymn had come to mean to me in those years, it became something of a theme to my early ministry. It was a central passage at my ordination, and the hymn was my ordination tune. The song was sung at every installation service I had as a new minister of a church, and it was sung at, at the very last worship I shared with churches when I had accepted a call to another. 
To this day, it's both a passage and a hymn that stir deep emotions and memories within me. As much as the passage has always had such personal meaning for me, however, I've also always felt that it was as much a nutshell encapsulation of the Christian faith as most any passage we have in Scripture. Just consider the, the three phases that Isaiah goes through in this vision. It starts with his understanding of his own shortcomings. Drawn into this vision of God sitting on a throne with six-winged seraphs surrounding him, the seraphs are calling out the glory of God, and Isaiah's attention turns to himself, and he comes face to face with his inadequacy. Woe is me, he says, I am lost, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah finds himself standing in the presence of God, unworthy of God, and terrified in the face of what that will mean for him. Along comes that six-winged seraph with a live coal on the end of a pair of tongs that is touched to Isaiah's lips. Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Without doing a thing, Isaiah's frailties and faultiness are erased by the grace of God. And then finally, newly restored by God's grace, Isaiah hears God calling out for those whom can be sent. And Isaiah replies, here am I. Send me. Does any of this sound a little familiar? Isaiah stands before God unworthy. Isaiah is forgiven of his sins by the unmerited grace of God. And Isaiah stands up in response to that grace and says, Here am I, send me. Centuries before the story of Jesus unfolded, before that narrative that we will remember next week played out, Isaiah's vision brings to life exactly that which we know through the passion of Jesus the Christ. We stood before God unworthy. Through the unwarranted grace and mercy of the cross, we were restored to our place in God's presence. And now the call is upon each of us to follow Isaiah's lead and say, I know where I was and I know where I am by means of your grace. So here I am. Send me. This passage from Isaiah has been a cornerstone piece of my sense of call into ministry for decades, and that song stirs me every time I sing it. The truth, however, is that these words from Isaiah are as clear an encapsulation of the Christian faith as exists in Scripture. We stood before God unworthy. Through the unmerited grace and mercy of Jesus on the cross, we found new life in God's presence. And now, in light of that tremendous gift of love, it is upon us to hear God's call in our lives and to proclaim, as Isaiah did, Here am I. Send me. Let's be in prayer together. God of abundant grace, there are no words to express the wonder and the joy that we know in the gift of your Son. We know we were unworthy. We know we were lost. And yet, we know that we stand held forever in your care through the mercy and grace of the story that stands before us in the weeks ahead. Open our hearts to the true wonder of that grace, God. Open our ears to the call you speak into our lives and open our minds that we might follow Isaiah's lead as we too proclaim, Here I am. Send me. For we pray it in his name. Amen.
I thank you all, as always, for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. I'll remind you, Sunday we enter into Holy Week. If you're going to come be with us in worship, uh, register online or give us a call and we can register you uh, for that if you're going to attend in person. But we'll we'll be back together Thursday. Then we are going to take a couple weeks off. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Thursday uh, as we get to and beyond Easter. But for now, have a wonderful afternoon. And I'll see you Thursday at noon for our next uh, devotional in our journey through the Bible. Have a great afternoon.